All right, this one is about the Ohio car, man. Y'all wanted one about the Ohio car, so I'm getting ready to give y'all one about the Ohio car. But just know that I like to sit back and ride, man. All right. Uh, unique make audio, man. This one's about the Ohio car. Let me tell you about a good brother I met from Ohio. Y'all want the one from Ohio. I met the brother, you know, 1990, 1994, 1995, you know, uh, in Lewisburg. This is about Lewisburg. It's going to lead into the Lewisburg ride because y'all been asking me about that Lewisburg ride too, so I'm going to give you that one. Gunshots to the Lewisburg ride, you know, not to promote it, but just let you know we did what we had to do to represent and, you know, from where we was at then. Now, let me get right into it. We got my man Mike Wagner, right? My man Mike, they uh, they they moved me in a room, and it's four bun uh, bunk beds in the room. It's like six bunk beds in the room. You know what I mean? Show you how we carry it. It's like six bunk beds in the room, and they move us in the room, and they bring in other people in the room, and we on the first floor. The first floor is for the screw-ups, straight screw-ups. Every time you go to the home, they got three floors. So you got the second floor, which was the DC floor. Third floor was really like everybody else. But all the DC dudes was on the second floor. You know what I mean? And then everybody else was on the third floor. And that was in our block. That's how it was. Then the first floor, that was the unit for the new people coming off the bus. Or if you go to the shoe, meaning the special housing unit from like the second or third floor, when you come out, you know, the shoe, they put you on the first floor in Lewisburg. Uh... And the reception block, they called it, you know. So nobody liked to be down there because people just coming in, you know, from, um, you know, onto into the institution. They don't have nothing but institutional clothes. They pile up. They're dirty. Dudes ain't even got cosmetics yet. So they're not even really, you know, taking care of their hygiene like they're supposed to unless they got a homeboy there. Like when I got there in Lewisburg, because like I said, I like to ride. So let me ride. When I get there to Lewisburg, you know what I mean? As soon as I hit there, my man Doo-Wop. Y'all seen this video. Go check out my man Doo-Wop's video. As soon as I get to Lewisburg, Doo-Wop gave me a big, you know, you know those grocery bags they used to give out, you know what I mean, in a uh, supermarket. That's what they gave us our commissary in there, so we had the grocery bags in the sale. Doo-Wop bring me a grocery bag with a bunch of cosmetics, you know, um, lotion, deodorant, toothpaste, toothbrush, you know, some soup, some popcorn, some mackerel, some rice, you know what I mean? And even threw some, you know, some beans in there, you know, for the protein. Because Duop was big on the workout. Uh, but now, you know, that's how they look out when you come. But when you're on this first floor, it's, you know, they don't really have nothing. And these are the dudes that keep screwing up going to the hole because they making wine and sell it. They making knives to sell it. They stealing out the kitchen. They stealing people property. And it's just the screw-ups on the first floor. You know what I mean? You go up to the second and third floor, then it's more organized up there where they get up, spread their beds, sweep their little area, keep their, you know, cosmetic shelf dust off. But the first floor was like anything go, you know? So <clears throat> when I first get there, they put me on the third floor, you know? But I get up on the third floor, and I don't know how it happened, but maybe they realized I wasn't third floor material, so they moved me downstairs to the uh, first floor. So I get in the first floor and they put me in a room with, you know, six bunk beds in, you know? You got one in every corner and then, you know, two in the side corners that was a little wider. So when I get down there, we got my man Mike Wagner from Ohio in there. Big shout out to Ohio. All right, all right, calm down. We got my man Mike Wagner from Ohio up in there. So Mike, Mike up in the joint in. You know, my man Snagger up in there, Wolf up in there, another homie named Bass from Haggardstown. You know what I mean? Mike Wagner was from Youngstown. This, this, this is the, you know, this is one of the wildest brothers I've met from Ohio. You know what I mean? Because I met a couple more brothers from Ohio that was official, but there wasn't a lot of brothers in, in the system back then from Ohio because the feds wasn't really sweeping through Ohio like they were doing in the major cities. So that's why I don't tell a lot of Ohio stories. You're always, always asking for it. But, you know, the few brothers that 
I know was official. I like to get in touch with them and get their permission to say their names before I say their names because this is a gangster's channel. This is not a channel where we just talk to talk and shoot out names. You know what I mean? Anybody I talk about, I was with. You understand what I'm saying? Or I know about through somebody that was with them, and I'm going to let you know that too so that you know you know what's first-hand information and second-hand information, and this is first-hand information. So now I'm in Lewisburg with my man. I'm moving the room to speed this up. I feel like going back to my old ways and, you know, talk about New York slick flash talk. All right? So I'm going to just speed this up so you can get to it until I get to the meat of my story. You know what I mean? So I get in the room. They got six bunk beds in the joint. So I got my homies in there. Like I said, it, 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 it's Mike Wagner, it's Snagger, Bass, Wolf, and a dude out of Florida named Nard. That's six of us. You understand what I'm saying? There's six bunk beds. So we each had our own bed, uh, bottom bunk. We don't want nobody on the top because when we laying down middle of the night, they give it to you raw how we do in prison. When you laying down and you think everybody's asleep, that's when dudes slide their hand in their pants and, you know what I mean, test themselves and do what they got to do. And, you know, so, you know, you don't want nobody up top with the bed rocking and you ain't trying to wake up from your bed rocking uh, 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 because somebody up there is violating you you know, masturbating in the bunk below, so you don't want nobody up top because you don't want that. And you know, like I said, you, you them type of things is done in private because it's out of respect. Because it it wasn't none of that he cipher monkey cipher crap amongst the men. Let's get that right, you know. And you know, so we didn't do that. But anyway, so we opened a joint. So it's six of us. So we just said, man, screw that. You know, we took the top bunks. You know, what I mean, look at this how wow we was. You know, I'm just getting to Lewisburg. We take the top bunks you know, the bed off the top apart and made all six beds single beds. So this is our room. We let the administration know don't put nobody in here. We not having it. You know what I mean? So we took the bed apart through that joint in the hallway and told them get it the hell out of here. So now when somebody come in, they look, the bed it count still says there's six beds. So they'll, they'll assign somebody to the room. Then they go back to the police, let the police know, yo, there's nowhere to go. There's no bed in there. Police come down and they look, they verify it, and they say, what happened? And we say, man, that's the way it is, man. That's how we living in here. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, every cell got a uh, bump, bump, bad. All right, when you take that up with the warden, nigga, you see what it is. We got single beds in this cell. Gunshots to the gangsters. So that's how we carried it. So all of us up in the joint now, and they hated us because they used to have a walkthrough once a week where the police come through. And when the police come through, when the police come through, they are... Uh, you know, they do inspection once a week. And, you know, police try and do inspection in the morning, make sure your bed spread in case the lieutenant come make a walkthrough. Our room was so messy that they never even opened our doors when these people came through the walkthrough. They'll just tell the administration, oh, no, skip that room. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they didn't complain because they knew it was something that they didn't want them to see to have to address about that room because us six brothers wasn't going for none of that. You know what I mean? And like I said, you know, I ain't geographical. You know what I mean? But that's why I'm letting you know. Uh, Youngstown, Ohio was Mike Wagner. Bass was from Hagerstown, Maryland. Nod was from um, Miami, Florida. You know, Wolf was from the Bronx, but caught his case, you know, in Charlottesville, West Virginia, I think it was. Big shout out to my man, Wolf. You know what I mean? And then Snagger in my Jamaica from Brooklyn. You know what I mean, I said? So that's what the room was, and we was like a unit, a, a team. So the administration know they can't even come to my room. They can't come nowhere near this room. I think it was like room 112, you know? So they, whenever anybody came in, they said, yo, bypass 112. You know, when they came in there, we had everything in there. You know what I mean? I mean, we just did what we wanted to do. Let's put it that way, you know? So now they come through and, uh, you know, then they had the Million Man March and all that came up and O.J. Simpson with the beating the trail and all that was coming up. And just everything was coming up and America was coming to a racial boil. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it trickled over in the prison system. When Mr. Louis Farrakhan was going to Washington to do the Million Man March, you know, um, October 16th, 1995, you know, America was in an uproar role where all the senators and congressmen and house representatives, they 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 left Washington just in case they came there to tear it up. But they came there in peace, you know. But in the jails, they on standby looking for something to happen. And then at that same time, they had what they called a crack law riot. 
uh, I mean, the, yeah, the crack law um, vote, which led to the crack law riot. The crack law vote was when it was, you know, 100 to 1, meaning you get caught with one gram of crack, you know, and then you, you have to get caught with 100 grams of powder for it to be equivalent to the same time. So one little gram that looked like this, and then now you got to have this much powder to get the same amount of time. But they only charged black people with the little crack, but they charged the white people with the powder, and then they kept the white people's cases in the state jail so they wouldn't be subject to the mandatory minimum laws that they created for the blacks. Y'all understand that? I'm giving y'all jewels now. My phone number on the screen if y'all trying to holler. You already know the Cash App. That's Get Ready Flash. Hit the like, hit the emoji, and make sure you join my podcast and do download some videos at Unique Make Audio Podcast at uh, all them joints. But anyway, so we up in the joint, man, and uh, all this going on, and it was a lot of tension. They had the, the, the goon squad is what they called it. If you ever seen the movie Ninja Turtles, them dudes with the big ass chests and shells and arm pads, knee pads, that's the Ninja Turtles. And that's what the goon squad is. They dress like that because they the ones that come in the unit to extract you when you carry on. So being at my cell, <clears throat> my room, we called it cell, but it was my room because that's all it was. It had more than two beds in it, so it was, it, was a, it was a room to me. But they used to go outside our window and do their uh, training. So they out there go, huh, huh, one, boom, 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 boom. And we could hear them and see them out there with this riot gear practicing beating each other's brains out like they one of us. And we looking out there, so now we have to plan. If they decide to come in here and get us niggas, how are we going to defend ourselves? And what are we going to do to defend ourselves? If I say, young, stay in school, stay off the street, and don't get off the porch because none of this is worth it. Look how I had to live, you know? I'm watching these big-ass white boys, all them over six foot five, all them over 280, and they got on this big ass Ninja Turtle gear with the batons and the shields and they out there banging on each other and we looking at them and we ain't got nothing but our little homemade knives, <laughs> you know? So that's when I decided, you know, one knife ain't no good. That's, you know, like on the street, you don't want just one car. You don't want just one woman. You know what I mean? You're getting money. You want multiple cars, multiple women, multiple guns and everything else. I'm thinking I'm in prison. I could lay back and chill out with just one knife. But when I looked out my window and I seen all this going on, I'm like, heck no. I went and made me another knife for the left hand. <laughs> you know what I mean? So now we ready to go when they ready to rumble. So we in there and we getting prepared because we felt it was an intimidation joint that they was doing. So we up in the joint and then uh, they voted on the crack law and they voted against it to keep it the same, meaning to keep blacks getting a hundred times more you know, than a white person, you know, that sell powder cocaine because they was arresting us blacks with crack cocaine, all right? So now we know that it's on. So when that happened, a big riot jumped off over there in uh, Talladega, you know what I mean? And Greenville, Illinois. You know, big shout out to Talladega and Greenville for standing up for what they believed in. You know what I mean? <laughs> big shout out, big shout out. You know what I mean? So, you know, that's where that was at now. So when they vote and they lost, those FCIs took off. And I think Long Park got into something and, you know, Allenwood uh, Medium and, you know, then Allenwood Pan. And it trickled to different jails where Janet Reno said lock the jails down. You know what I mean? So she locked down for the first time in American history every prison in the United States of America dealing with the feds. It ain't had nothing to do with it. We're in Lewisburg getting money, smoking weed, drinking white lightning, other dudes messing with the, with the dope. Everybody doing their thing. We wasn't thinking about none of that because the crack law wasn't helping us because all of us was the big boys that had way more than a little bit that triggered the mandatory minimum. So matter what the, no matter what the vote was, we still stuck with a life sentence. You understand what I'm saying? So we minded our business doing our thing. And next thing you know, they started getting real aggressive down there. So after they locked us down, they decided to feed us one unit at a time. So when they opened the doors up, ain't nobody go eat because we all got our food in our lockers and all that because we was preparing for this. 
So nobody go eat. So they get mad that nobody go eat for about a week, you know. So the next week they decided to give a black man his favorite meal. They went out and got chicken and deep fried whole pheasant chickens, man, in hot grease and seasoned Cajun style. You know what I mean? They got the best black cooks in the prison. Big shout out, Louisiana. You know what I mean? Big shout out, Louisiana. You know, because that's where the cook was from. So they, 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 they did this chicken, man, that was so fire, you know, that we could, and they turned, it was like they turned out all the fans in the prison. They turned out all the fans in the prison and pointed it from the kitchen to the housing units to blow that good old Cajun chicken smell all up in the units. Say, y'all niggas don't want to eat. Well, we going to torture you, you know? So by the time we smelled to be like, yo, you know, and, you know, everybody said we wasn't going to eat because we were bucking. We were protesting. Nigga was like, yo, dog, that, uh, that chicken smell kind of good, family. You know what I mean? Those dudes be like, yeah, I know, but, you know, we ain't supposed to be going down. There ain't nobody going to eat. Like, yo, you know, we, we, we got to talk to the homies, man. We ain't eating a week. I mean, locker getting low and, you know, chicken smelling good. And you, you know what I mean? And I heard they have whole pheasants down there. So they send some chicken back to every unit. Show you how dirty they play. They send back a, 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 some chicken back to every unit for the police that was working. So when we walk by the police desk, we see the police with a whole pheasant, a chicken this big, man. You know what the pheasant is, man. It's a whole chicken, and it was deep fried, crispy, Cajun style. And this police in there eating, and, and he's saying that that's what they got in the chicken for, in the kitchen for us today. So we're like, oh, man, you know what I mean? So now everybody getting a huddle. We're like, oh, we got to go get that pheasant, man. I, I ain't have one of them. I mean, I, I've been locked up, <laughs> you know? So we said screw that. So we decided to go down there. So they let us in there one unit at a time to make sure if something joke jumped off, they could control it because one unit might have 150 people, whereas, you know, you put all the units in there together and run regular main line, and you might have 1,000 people in there, 1,500 from all the inmates coming in and out to eat, and if something jumped off, they couldn't control it, so they let one unit out at a time. So by the time they let our unit out and we walk down and we go in there to eat, they telling us we got seven minutes to eat. Now, we're in Lewisburg Penitentiary. We straight gangsters. Big shout out to the gangsters. Gunshots for my gangsters. Now, seven minutes and to eat this good ass pheasant and nigga ain't eating about a week. <laughs> you know what I mean? A hot meal other than with a stinger. Oh, no. If you don't know what a stinger is, that's when you take a wire, you know, like, like electrical cord and you cut it, strip the two wires and you wrap it around a nut. You know what I mean? And you plug it in and drop it in the water. The nut get hot, heats up the water. You take a plastic bag, put your food in it, sit it on top of the water that the nut is in the bottom of heating up. And, you know, it turns to steam, and that's what cook your food. Because a lot of it, the food that they give us is pre-cooked. We even cook raw rice with it, with that joint. You know how long that take. But anyway, like I said, I'm riding. So let me go on back. So now we back in the joint, and we in the kitchen. They tell us seven minutes to eat. We're not trying to hear that. You understand what I'm saying? And... You know, we really want more than this one pheasant because the joint was finger-licking good. You know what I mean? Kentucky Fried Chicken had nothing on this, uh, you know, Louisiana brother that was laying it down. So now it was time to leave. They telling us that we couldn't take none of the food back to the unit. You know, in other words, like, you got to eat it here, you know? So, you know, we go to go leave. And when we walk out the joint, they searching everybody. They pat searching everybody to see if they got anything on them. So... My man, you know, Mike Wagner, wild dude go to wild. He walks out the joint and he got his hand in his jacket like this. You know, he got his hand in his jacket, you know, and he's like this with his hand in his jacket and he's walking out the kitchen and they see him and they call him over there for a, for a pat search. So when they call for a pat search, about five police surround him. So now me and all the homies, we surround the five police. You know what I mean? And they like, yo, keep it moving, keep it moving. Nah, you know, y'all keep it moving, let our man come. And they said, nah, we get ready searching. We said, all right, well, we get ready to watch you to make sure you don't try nothing. You know what I mean? So now other police come and, you know, some other homies come now and they got the other police around us. So it's a big standoff in the main line, you know what I mean? On the red top, you know, in front of the main line. So while we all out there, they telling, you know, my man take his hand out of his jacket. And he said, nah, and they telling us to go back. And we said, nah, we ain't leaving without him. You know what I mean? So my man Mike made a choice for us. He took off running. Woof. 
See that hallway? That's how he ran down a dark hallway like that. Now, all the police running behind him. All you hear is the keys jingling, you know. And they running behind him with them big-ass boots and all that crap on their belt. So when they get there, you know, we go running behind them. So when we get down to the unit, they already called the police on the walkie-talkie. said, got one running down towards J and I block. So the police all come out in the hallway. You know, Mike, old big boy. Mike was like maybe 6'2", six, 6'3", six, and he was about 260 solid. And he was only like 18, 19 years old, fresh from Youngstown, Ohio, man. So you see what we had to work with. You know what I mean? So Mike runs in the joint. You know what I mean? So when he runs in the joint, the police there, and he gets trapped on the cells, I mean, on the stairs, going upstairs, because like I said, it's two floors. So he stops on the stairs, and he still got his hand in his jacket. You know what I mean? So they tell him, take your hand out. And he's like, nah. So now we all got him surrounded. We like, yo, back up. Leave him alone. You ain't doing nothing to him. They say, nah, we're taking him to the shoe. For what? For running. So what he ran? We ran. Nigga, lock us up too. But that's how we carried it back then. Like I said, my man from Ohio. I'm from New York. We got dudes there from Chicago. Big shout out to Kenny High. You know what I mean? We got dudes there from Miami. Big shout out to Nard. You know what I mean? We got Big JR from Miami. We got Bass from Hagerstown. You understand what I'm saying? We got the, we got the DC brothers. We got everybody out there. Wasn't having none of that. So Mike leaning on the stairs, one leg up and one leg down, got his hand in his jacket. He said, I ain't going nowhere. I'm not moving. You know? So when he hit him with the, I'm not moving, they said, nah, you're you going to take your hand out your jacket. And we all said, no, he ain't. You know what I mean? Let them know we go to war. And then out of nowhere, here come this big old black pork chop looking. He was about, let me even tell you his name. If y'all was in the system, you know, his name was Blanchard. You know, Blanchard, a big Panamanian, came out of New York, MDC, Brooklyn, to work in Lewisburg, because they ain't had no black police in this racist-ass white joint. So they sent a black police there, but he was a black Panamanian. He was black like me, but he was Panamanian, speak fluent Spanish, so he was able to deal with the Spanish New Yorkers coming in, and he was able to deal with, you know, the New York, D.C., Chicago, you know, Jersey, all the street dudes, you know, black dudes. So that's why they brought him in to manipulate us. So Blanchard come walking up in there. Blanchard was, like I said, Blanchard was about six, about six four, six five, and he was about 290, 280. But big old black boy, you know what I mean? Gunshots to Blanchard. And rest in peace, because them crackers killed him in Allenwood. You want to know how Blanchard got killed in Allenwood? Put it in the comments. You know what it is. Phone them on the screen. Game is to be sold, not told. Nigga, cash app working. I don't care if it's a damn dollar. You know what I mean? Let's get this going. So now we up in the Jordan. Blanchard come in there. Blanchard, y'all, well, calm down, y'all. My name, um, Lieutenant Blanchard. I just got here. They brought me here because they said it was too racist. They treating the blacks too bad over here. And he gave us this whole spill like he was our Moses. You know what I mean? Like he was our Abe Lincoln came to free us. That's the way he's introducing himself you know, to us. You know, So I ain't going to front. You know, the nigga rocked us to sleep. You know what I mean? He rocked us to sleep. Gunshots. You know what I mean? He rocked us to sleep. We, he had us thinking that, you know, he was a fair dude on our side, you know? So he tell them, y'all, man, take your hands out your jacket, big boy, so that, you know, your homies ain't got to punish my police. That's the way he even said it. You know what I mean? Manipulation game. He said, take your hands out your jacket so that, you know, your homies ain't got to punish my police because they don't know that they're dealing with real gangsters from across the nation. You know what I mean? So my man would take his hand out and he ain't have nothing. So we all laughed at the police. They let him go. You know what I mean? They let him go. So now they had laundry day where we had to go down to the laundry or get the clothes. And being that we was on lockdown and dudes couldn't get to wash their laundry as much as they did, they let us go down there to exchange laundry. So we go down there to exchange the laundry in the laundry in the basement in Lewisburg. And like I said, I use this background because see this black dark alley behind me? That's how dark and gloomy Lewisburg was, literally, because they had regular, like, 60-watt, 40-watt light bulbs in the ceiling to light up the whole area, So it, and there was no windows, so you already know that them hallways was dark, you know? And you had to walk down, and you got to be for somebody, you in trouble like a mother, you got to go down that laundry. But we went down the laundry to go get our clothes and stuff, our change and you know, toilet paper, you know, toothbrush and hygiene. So, because the commissary was closed, so we had to use the government crap. So we walked down in the joint. When we go down the joint, they trying to tell us, oh, only only one care package per inmate. And first of all, we got offended because they said inmate. We not invades, nigga. We convicts. Inmates do what they're supposed to do. 
You know what I mean? You know, they do inmates do what they what, what they told to do, excuse me. Inmates do what they told to do. You know, convicts do what they want to do. And that's what we was. So we like, man, man come on. Ain't no police here, nigga. You handing this shit out. You acting like a police monitoring this shit. You know what I mean? So, you know, my man Mike Wagner, he was so official. Let me drive back to the kitchen. We're going to get back to the laundry. Mike working in the kitchen. Me and Mike in the kitchen. They just put me in there when I just go in there. I'll tell you what happened and how they wound up getting me out the kitchen. But, you know, me and Mike in there. And it was like a hamburger day or chicken day. One of them good days. So when the inmates come, they telling us to give the inmates one piece. You understand? But now we live with these men. So a homie come up or somebody you know come up and he going to tell you put two chickens up there. You know, like if the police ain't looking, you just slide two chickens up there and he know to take one, cuff it under the tray, whatever he got to do so the police don't see it. So the police bust the homie, you know, Mike, you know, putting more than one chicken up on the plate. So the police said, didn't I tell you? And he pointed on the mic face. Right? He said, didn't I tell you only give them men and them um, um, inmates one piece of chicken each? And you know what I mean? And Mike said, hold up, that's my man. And he said, I don't care who it is. Every inmate get one piece of chicken. And Mike said, hold up, first of all, get your hands out of my face. I don't know who you talking to. You you got me screwed up. I'm from Youngstown, Ohio, nigga. You know what I mean? This is what Mike told him, you know? That's why I love him to death. That's why I put him down on the team, you know, because he was younger than me. I said, man, I got, I, I can deal with this dude. Mike told him, man, you know, you, you, you telling me that I got to get one piece. And dude said, yeah, that's the rules. Mike said, well, I don't like rules and I don't like you. So the next inmate came up there. Mike started just putting two or three pieces of chicken on everybody's plate while the man talking to him, telling him only put one piece of chicken. So dude's grabbing the chains and moving by fast as a mother with that chicken. Because now he don't put two, three chickens on the tray. So they, they, they just going and they see he beef with the police. So the other police come over and see the beef he doing. But while that's going on, Mike got his elbow out like this. You know what I mean? Holding the police back. And he putting the chicken on the tray giving away the chicken. Like, yo, take this, y'all. Screw them police. Take this. Screw them police. That was Mike. You know what I mean? So, you know, big shout out to Young Sal. <laughs> big shout out to Young Sal. All right, all right, all right. All right, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. All right? Now, you know, Mike sit there and he peek what's going on that the police trying to come, so he just getting rid of the chicken. So when they come over there now, he didn't have enough time to empty the pan that he was dealing with. You know what I mean? So what he do is he take, you know, he takes the whole pan. You understand what I'm saying? And he told the homies that was there, put your trays together real quick. So, every, you know, the trays was big. So now they got four big ass trays like this together. And Mike took that pan and dumped that whole pan of chicken on the thing in front of the police and looked at him and said, now you go take it from them. Being that you telling me I can't give it to them. I got to go back there and live with these men. So I'd rather whoop you by yourself than go back there and have to fight 40, 50 of my homeboys because I followed your punk ass rule when I know if I was on the other side of that coming through there and somebody here that I know asked for an extra piece, I, I expect them to give it to me. So I'm giving them what I expect them to do for me. Now you want that chicken, you go get it back from them. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they say, oh, that's it, you fired. So they fired Mike, put him in the shoe. You know what I mean? So now, er, let's go back to the laundry. See, understand? It's a method to all the man to just sit back, relax, and enjoy the damn ride, man. All right? Just relax. Like I said, they got other channels, no disrespect. You quietly just tap out. So then now, we go back down in the basement in Lewisburg, and they tell us they're only going to give us one of the little care package. You know, Mike said, nah, man, what do you mean one kid package? You know, because this after Mike then made a stand for us and, you know, gave away all the chicken, fought with the police, because he had to fight him that day because he wasn't letting them put their handcuffs on. Let's get that straight. Mike is not the type of dude that the police come and say, hey, cuff up. No, Mike's not cuffing up. You know what I mean? So he, he fought for this movement. So now we're in the basement and the same scenario in the inmates, because that's what they were inmates. They wasn't convicts like Mike. You know what I mean? The inmates tried to give him one thing and said the police said. So Mike went behind the counter, grabbed all that shit, and he started handing it out to everybody. You know what I mean? He said, go get your boss, nigga. And he handing out everybody. Yo, how many you need? How many you need? And he giving it out like it's crack. You know what I mean? Big shout out to Youngstown, Ohio. Big shout out. You know what I mean? Big shout out. All right, all right, all right. All right. Calm down, y'all. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down, man. Listen. 
So, so check, check. So now, so you youngins understand. If I'm telling you, don't go to prison, man. It ain't worth it, man. I mean, like I said, I done been there, done it all. I'm going to give you all a Larry Hoover story this week. You know what I mean? Because I see everybody tell me I'm free. Larry Hoover, most definitely free the big homie. You know what I mean? But, you know, I don't know how I feel about dudes that don't even know the man. Don't even, didn't even take the time to study his cause. You understand what I'm saying? And they speaking on him. But, you know, everything is for views. But I'm going to give you my experience <laughs> with Larry Hoover this week. You know what I mean? Like I said, all my shit documented, nigga. You know, check mines. You know, it's all in the computers. But anyway, so, you know, Mike gives out all the stuff. You know, the dude got mad and tried to grab the bag from Mike that he was handing out the stuff in. And, you know, Mike snuffed him. You know what I mean? Mike snuffed him. So when he's snuffing out all the laundry workers run up, so, you know, me, Snag, all of us, we went up and, you know, we got to rumbling with them and we doing our thing in the basement and it's us against the little fake ass inmate laundry workers. But bottom line is, you know, we all got locked up. You know what I mean? So now we come out and we went back to our block to start on the first floor. You know what I mean? So, uh, matter of fact, they didn't even lock us up. They took us back to the unit because this was doing a lockdown. My bag, they took, that was the other time we got locked up. I got to tell you about that one. But they take us back to the unit now, but now they tired of us, basically, because we done had Mike run down there with the chicken. You know what I mean? Um, like he stole it, because this is doing a um, major lockdown by Janet Reno. So they pissed off at that. Then, you know, we go down to the laundry, and we bucking that. You know what I mean? So they decide to come get us. They decide to come get us middle of the night, man. They decide to come get us middle of the night. So they come to the door and they open the door. But like I said, we've been watching them doing all that training outside the door. So we knew what was going on. You know what I mean? We we we, we looking at they they training to come punish us. So on the strength of that, we like, nah, dog. So they come down there that night after the laundry thing, and you know, um, nah, this was after the the, the chicken incident. And they bust the doors, and they got our ID cards in their hand, and they called it out, you know, Wagner, you know, Hall, Harris, big shout out to Mo Gary from uh, Baltimore, you know what I mean? He was one of the old heads they put, my, my Mo ain't had nothing to do with it, Mo was the voice of reason, Mo is official gangster, like, um, like Abdul Shakur, you know what I mean? These is, these is our elders, you know what I mean? Big shout out to Abdul Shakur. All right. All right, calm down, y'all. Calm down. Big shout out to Abdul Shakur, my man, um, Mo Gary, you know, out of Baltimore. They was, gee, Mo got locked up because, you know, doing the crack law thing, went to ADX with us because they felt like all he had to do was tell me, stop, and I would have stopped, which I would have stopped because that's my elder, and I followed the chain of command the same way they followed the chain of command. But, you know... Mo allegedly made a statement where he said, you know, in the day room when everybody was trying to beg and plead with us not to fight the police, was trying to say, oh, we can't win, we can't win. But we were like, nah, we got to fight for a cause. They are there with the crack thing, da 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 And they talking about coming here to get us, trying to carry us. We're not living under these conditions, da 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 And Mo made a statement, you know, uh, allegedly saying, uh, what was the exact word? He said, man, don't y'all try and put out the fire in the in the younger warriors because your fire, your light has been dimmed and you don't have the fight in you no more, you know? But that's what warriors are for. They fight for the elders. So if they feel that their fight is just and right, we're not in a position to tell them what we would do, you know what I mean, as elders, when we know that these is unjust times and this is what's supposed to be done that these young men is professing to do, you know? And that's what got him sent to the ADF. Now, Shakur, I, you know, Shakur, they railroaded Shakur. He went out the other unit and he was just, you know, documenting what was going on just to keep records so that the administration didn't try and change the narrative. And when they ran up in his cell, they found the notes that he was taking and took that and switched it and tried to make it look like he was dictating these orders. When I didn't even take my shahada at this time. I was just a savage running around with two knives in Lewisburg, smoking weed, drinking wine, and looking for somebody to knock out. You know what I mean? And Shakur, you know, was the email for the Muslims. 
you know? And Shakur always tried to talk to us respectfully and let us know, you know what I mean, how to, you know, follow the sooner. You know what I mean? And, you know, and calm down with our savage ways. But I wasn't ready to hear it. Like a lot of these youngins ain't ready to hear it. That's why I understand. And that's why I let you know that if, if none of this deteriorates you from wanting to, you know, to, 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 to square up, as they say, you know what I mean? And go get a damn job, get your woman and lay down and fall in love instead of out here getting money, you know, screwing 10 different women and then thinking, you know, but I love a dog when she goes school the next unique. Stop it. You know, you know what I mean? If you think that that's what you want, go ahead and do it. But I'm telling you not to do it. But do what you want. Do you. But just make sure you handle the code and conduct of doing what you do by running on the street. And that means you don't tell on your comrade or no one you claim responsibility for your own actions that you chose that got you caught up don't bring in another man i said that really slow so that y'all could comprehend the words that are coming out my mouth now don't get involved is what i'm telling you but if you think you tough enough know to shut the f up all right that's the bottom line Gunshots to the suckers that want to tell, you know, but you got a choice not to do it. So you ain't got to worry about telling. So now, you know, that's what Shakur got locked up for. So now the police decide they're coming down there. They're coming to lock us up, you know, um, us in our block, because our block is the unit that, you know, caused the trouble when they first opened up in the kitchen with the chicken with Mike on the red top, having the police run down there, squared off down in our block in the stairway where they had to call the new house nigga Blanchard down there to calm us down. Then our block is the one that went in the laundry, wound up, you know what I mean, starting a big fight down the laundry. We couldn't even put him in the shoe that day, da 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 You know what I mean? So they're like, nah, let's go to our block. So they come there with these ID cards and they call our name. When they call our names, we was already set up because we already went and got, you know, big barrels, you know, like the garbage pails. We got the garbage pails and filled it up with cold water. Now, put in the comments why we use cold water. Now, we filled the garbage pails up with cold water. We went and got all the towels and all the sheets, and we piled them up in there, and we had the garbage pans with the cold water, you know, all around, you know, one by the lawn, by the shower, you know, because they got windows in the shower. We got one by the kitchen, I mean, one by the uh, bathroom, you know, and then we've got a couple in between the doors by the doors. And y'all tell me why you think we got these cold barrels of water. And I'm going to tap out right there. And I'm going to give you part two. I'll probably do it when I get off of this because this has already been damn near 40 minutes. But I'm going to give you part two to this because we was gearing up for the riot. You know what I mean? Because they come to take us out the unit. So like I said, we don't went and put the garbage pans with the water. We don't tied the back doors up. You know what I mean? Allegedly. <laughs> you know what I mean? With extension cords so they couldn't come in through the back doors down the back stairs. We don't threw water on the floor. You know what I mean? And stew shampoo in it. You know what I mean? And kicked it around to make it real sudsy and things like that. Now y'all tell me why we did all of this. You know what I mean? It's a little trivia for something y'all to ponder while I give you part two. You know what I mean? So we got the buckets of water with all the towels and sheets. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, cold bucket of water, you, you know, garbage pail of water. And we got water on the floor with shampoo all in it. You know what I mean? And we done tied the back door up. And here come these Europeans come to the front with our ID cards, said they want us to come to the front so they could take us out the, out the unit. So you know what we told them. You know what I mean? Come and get us, copper. I make a what? Make a audio. Gunshots if they think they're coming in here without a fight. Gunshots if they think they're coming in here without a fight. Gunshots. That's how our mentality was, and I'm telling you I don't want you there, so that's why I'm telling you don't get involved so you don't have to be there. Now, for that, I'm going to tap out. I'm going to give y'all part two to this if you want it, tell you the details of what happened during the riot, which I know that's what y'all want to hear, how we was fighting. But that's how it led up to it with my man, you know, Mike Wagner from Youngstown, Ohio. He wound up going to ADX with me and met a lot of these characters. And, you know what I mean? You know, I mean, come on, man. All right.